Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. So yeah, it's a Thursday evening and I just want to do a very quick sort of explainer video or something like that for people. There were a lot of people on Twitter as the T-Mobile announcement was being made, T-Mobile and Starlink are teaming up to create a essentially a cell tower emulator in space, which is an incredible undertaking. And it seemed like a lot of people were very confused about this. So I wanted to do a real quick thing. I don't have it particularly organized. I've got a lot of notes sitting on my computer. <laughs> so anyway, I will be reading off of that as I go. But the basic idea <clears throat> is inverting what we're all used to. So the classic thing, in fact, I just watched a Curious Droid video this morning that was excellent about Telstar 1, which was the first telecommunications satellite. And actually you should go watch that if you're completely confused about this stuff. But basically Telstar 1 was a tiny little ball and it was it had microwave antennas around the outside of it and it spun around. And these antennae were tiny little antennae and you had to have gigantic, you know, huge, those gigantic radio dishes that you see, uh, or the big horn one, the one that actually discovered the uh, microwave background radiation information about the universe, was actually designed as a communications uh, horn telescope to be able to communicate with things like Telstar 1. So it's kind of weird how all this stuff all works together. Essentially, Starlink and T-Mobile are inverting this process. So you've got your cell phone, which I'm recording this on or else I'd show you, but you know what a cell phone looks like. And inside of it, it's got this tiny little antenna that's wrapped around, usually around the back of the phone in kind of a rectangular shape. That antenna is puny. And what they're going to do is put a big antenna in space. <laughs> and so they're going to invert it, right? We had, we're used to the idea that satellites have tiny little antennae. And on the ground, you have big giant antennae and they receive these weak little signals and they rebroadcast that they amplify it up to a certain amount and then they pass that on to wherever it goes that's the way the you know the apollo missions in the 60s work that's the way that uh, the space shuttle works it's the way that when orion and the sls launch and it goes back around the back side of the moon we're going to have tiny little antennae on these spaceships and we're going to have big giant dishes that receive this information on Earth, and they will then be able to take that tiny little signal and amplify it and detect it from the noise. Essentially what's going on here is they're doing this backwards, which I'm still kind of processing because it's insanity. So you're taking a phone which has a tiny little antenna, and the way that cell phone towers work on Earth is that there's a cell, right? And so just imagine like a little circle on the ground or something, and there's all of these overlapping circles in the entire like country, wherever you have cell phone service, all of those things are overlapping and the cell tower itself, if you've ever looked up there, they have big antennae, right? That's those big sort of blocky looking rectangular things or whatever shape it is. But those things are up there on the tower and they take the puny little signal that your, your telephone is producing and they receive that, they, they you know separate it out from the noise and everybody else's signals. They take that and then they amplify it and then they pass it on down fiber optics or things or satellites or something else they pass that information on, then they receive the information that you want. So maybe you request a web page, right? So they get your request, that gets passed on, and then they get the data and they pass that back at a very high amplification so that your tiny little antenna can actually receive that. And there's a certain number of customers that can be served per cell. That's effectively what goes on. And that's the reason why if you go to something like a football game or something, everybody's so reception is terrible because you know when you've got only a certain number of customers that can be served per cell area everybody in that football stadium is in the same cell and so they're overtaxing it it's not it's not used to having 80,000 people simultaneously trying to use their coverage or, or some number like that so essentially what we're doing is we're replacing the cell tower with a satellite and it's not Starlink version 1 which is currently in space it's Starlink version 2 and there's some really interesting information about that to come but Starlink V2, Elon said that they're going to add an additional antenna. So this thing's about seven meters long. It's very, very big. I'm about, you know, a little less than two meters tall. So imagine like three and a half of me or something like that. So stacked on top. It's very, very big. Seven meters tall and I think five meters wide and it's got big antennae, but they're going to add a five by five meter antenna that I think is going to unfold out. And that is going to be dedicated to cell phone coverage. And T-Mobile is giving up a slice of what they're calling their mid-band spectrum, which they said was K-A-K-U. Uh, and God, I can't remember the frequencies right now. But anyway, you can look it up. K-A-K-U are two of the, the standard 
frequencies that cell phone manufacturers, cell phone companies are allowed to use. So they're kind of slicing away a piece of that for Starlink to have access to. And then what will happen is that the, uh, they said that essentially if the cell phone is in a dead zone, in other words, it will first try to go to a land-based cell tower because there are restrictions to this, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But it will go to a land-based cell tower, but let's say that you're in the middle of Yellowstone National Park, way in the backwoods, there is no cell phone coverage out there at all, right? So you're off the grid and let's say, you know, something like, God forbid, a bear attacks your, 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 the person who's hiking with you or something and the person is injured, you have the choice nowadays to drag that person back to civilization or leave them you know, by a tree or something, hope that they survive while you try to hike back and find some other person somewhere or get coverage someplace miles and miles away. It's a horrible situation. Blizzards, you know, Elon talked about that. Blizzards, uh, floods, um, hurricanes, you know, natural disasters of all, the, all types of possibilities. But what you would be able to do then is at the beginning, you won't be able to send like call somebody, but you'll be able to send a text message that says, please help. And I would hope that they would have some access to longitude latitude information, you know, that it would automatically be able to upload that information. And so they would immediately know and they could send a helicopter in to that exact, you know, longitude latitude location. That would be the ideal situation. They didn't get that specific about it, but it's pretty incredible. So the technical hurdles to this are number one, the satellite is, you know, a cell phone tower is usually, you know, half a kilometer away. It's usually in sight. You know, a lot of times you can actually see it. You can look up if you can, are clever enough and you can see it. So it's not very far away, maybe a kilometer or two at the most. This thing is 500 miles or about 800 kilometers above the earth. So it's really far away. And if you remember, the strength of a signal goes down by the square of the distance. So every time you double the distance, it's a quarter of the signal strength. So my tiny little phone here with its tiny little power and its tiny little antenna is producing a tiny little amount of power. And as it travels out 800 kilometers or so, it is losing that every time it doubles, it's a quarter of the strength. It doubles, it's a quarter of the strength. So it's going to be an absolutely ridiculously tiny signal by the time it gets up to this satellite. The satellite then has to get that. It has to Doppler shift everything because it's moving. Again, cell phone tower not generally moving versus you, more than maybe you know 60 or 70 miles an hour if you're going down the highway. But that's a relatively minor Doppler shift. But this thing's cruising along at, I think, 25-ish thousand kilometers an hour, 17,500 miles an hour. So it's moving moving fast. So it's got to deal with Doppler shifts and things like that. And they have to fix all those problems. And then they have to detect it. And then it has to send the request to wherever it's going. And that request <coughs> you know, comes back. Maybe it goes to an emergency services thing in 911. And they say like, oh gosh, we've got that. We can fix this problem. They then send the information back to you. That then has to get broadcast out at a very, very high level of, of amplification so that your tiny little receiving antenna on your phone is able to pick it up weekly. And it should have approximately the same signal strength as a normal cell tower would have if it was located nearby. So the basic thing is they're spoofing cell towers. They're turning the Starlink satellite version two into a cell tower. And that is pretty ridiculous. Okay, so basically when I heard this, <laughs> my brain just went, <laughs> I actually tweeted something on Twitter and had a brain exploding picture because I was like, this is insanity. So at first, only texts and messaging. They did not specify if something like Apple's iMessaging would work, although I would be hard pressed to believe that Apple wouldn't want to do this because they'll have to make some changes to the messaging, um, the, the streaming, the way that they do that. But this all sounds like relatively simple stuff. Um, Elon said that Starlink is actually working in the lab. They haven't launched any version two satellites yet, but he says working in the lab, it actually functions properly. <clears throat> so they, and maybe they have some experimental stuff on version one ones, something like that. But anyway, it seems to be working. They think they've got the technical hurdles accomplished. It should, the service should go out to emergency services you know, so for people who are first responders and stuff and might have to like fire jumpers in the middle of California who have to go out of cell phone coverage and jump into fires, they can enable this immediately. It might be very slow at the beginning because there's only a few satellites up there, but as opposed to internet where you want that continuous 
uh, connection, right? You know, if you want to watch a video, it kind of sucks if it stops every five seconds. But with text messages, text messages are tiny, so it's really, really easy to send them. And also, it doesn't, it can be asynchronous. So you can request to send it, and it can wait for minutes and minutes. I know if you've ever been out of cell phone coverage, you'll see the, the little text message thing will get up to a certain point and stop. What it's doing is it's waiting for somebody to respond to send that text message. So the thing can just wait and wait and wait and then send it when it gets coverage. So, you know, it do, you don't have to have a ton of satellites lit like with the internet service. So just a few is actually enough for basic emergency response. So that's actually huge. Eventually their goal is to have voice and data. Also, that'll be pretty ridiculous. Um, Elon said currently it's two to four megabits per second per cell area. But cell areas for, you know, again, for local towers is like, a, you know, a couple of kilometers. That's kind of the size. He said much, much bigger. <laughs> I don't know exactly what that means. Probably not the size of Alaska, but it could be thousands of square kilometers. So this is really designed for kind of backwoodsy sort of things. This is not designed for being in New York City. You would never want to use this over the cell phone options that are there unless there was a horrible natural disaster. Maybe the power went out or something but you could still have access to text message to satellites when everything else went down. So that's, it's a really cool thing. It's kind of a redundant, it's a, it's a fully redundant backup to land-based cell phone. They actually said that. Uh, so that's pretty amazing. So anyway, uh, many parts of the world's oceans, almost all of the United States, I think they said parts of Alaska might not be included, probably way up above the Arctic Circle or something, but pretty much all of the U.S. I didn't realize that a half a million Square miles of the United States are not covered by cell phone coverage right now. We are a really big country. But anyway, in addition to that, and all the U.S. territories, all the U.S. waters will also be covered. There will be basically no more cell phone dead zones wherever you go. Again, for basic messaging and things at the beginning, and then hopefully over time, as they get a giant you know, constellation of these satellites, you'll be able to also get... Uh, voice and data and things like that as well. But anyway, that means that there's a huge safety benefit to this. That's kind of the primary thing they were touting in the near in the near you know future. The other piece of this puzzle is it works with existing phones. So if you have a T-Mobile based phone, you and they said possibly other you know carriers too because pretty much everybody in LTE and and 5G and everything uses basically the same technology. So. Uh, if you're, you know, if, if you're on sort of a reciprocal thing with Starlink, with T-Mobile, etc., you get this for free. You don't have to buy a new phone. That is also incredible because remember, it's spoofing the cell tower. So the phone itself doesn't realize that it's communicating with the satellite. It just thinks it's communicating with the cell tower. So that's amazing. Save lives, obviously. I already talked about big antennae. You'd have to have gigantic antennae in space as opposed to on the earth to receive these tiny signals. Uh, Elon says that it should work in your pocket or in a car, but it would definitely work if you just went outside and held the phone up. You don't have to do any crazy like, you know, <laughs> trying to track the satellites or something like that. It would just work as that would work. So it's pretty crazy. Uh, also, um, um, the CEO of, of T-Mobile said that the vision is to have no fees for their normal plans. So their uncarrier plans and things. Honestly, we're on Verizon. This might be one of those things that would make me switch to T-Mobile again. Uh, one of the problems with T-Mobile was that I would find that it would have a lot of dead zones back in the back areas of the United States, which would get frustrating. So we ended up switching to Verizon. So it might be time to switch back again when they do this. So, hey, there you go. <laughs> Good outcome for T-Mobile. But anyway, the idea is if you buy a normal unlimited data plan or something like that, you get this for free. That's the vision. They're just announcing the technology. They haven't announced the packages yet. So that's not a done deal, but that's the likelihood. So that's really, really cool. Uh, also, Elon said that, you know, as you might expect, a ton of extra hardware and a lot of extra software as well, a ton of software work has gone into making this possible, but it sounds like it's pretty much already working again, at least in lab conditions. So that's pretty amazing. The other thing about this is that if companies will dedicate some of their mid-band spectrum to Starlink, then Starlink is willing to do this to any cell phone company in the world. And T-Mobile said that they will do reciprocal roaming. So if you go to, uh, I don't know, <laughs> to Spain or France or, or Nigeria or wherever, you know, wherever you want to go in the world, if they have a reciprocal roaming deal, then that would allow you to send text messages, basic, you know, text messages, communication from anywhere on the planet that had a reciprocal deal. Again, just using your cell phone, nothing special about that. 
that is again remarkably amazing so anyone elon said to get in touch so if you happen to own a cell phone company then you should get in touch for sure uh one interesting question was would this potentially be used would starlink potentially be used as a backhaul transport and he said yes and what that means is the the backhaul transport is like basically you you communicate from your cell phone to the cell tower there that's a radio communication but then all the sort of other stuff that happens is backfilled from fiber optics that are connected to these cell towers to main things that get routed from there. So essentially Starlink could take some of that weight off of T-Mobile, especially back in the middle of nowhere. So instead of having to build a cell tower out in the middle of nowhere uh, for like a couple of people, they could just use Starlink to do that instead. So that's also pretty amazing. Uh, okay. Then someone asked about how many in Falcon 9, and this was interesting because there's been some talk lately about the Elon and Starlink and SpaceX have been saying that it would require Starship to do the uh, Starlink version 2 because they're so big and so heavy. But Elon backtracked a little bit about that and said there might be a Starlink V2 Mini that they could launch on Falcon 9, and they actually have asked for FCC approval to launch V2. They just said, I think if I recall right, it was like V2. But anyway, V2 Mini is interesting, so it's a more compact version. I don't know if that would enable this communication because, again, you're going to have to open up a 25-meter squared antenna all dedicated just to T-Mobile and getting that sort of information there. So I'm not positive that V2 Mini would be able to make this happen, but it's really interesting information that that's what they're looking at doing in the interim because Starship, of course, is taking a long time to get going. So, all right, let's see. So basically, again, emergency services, as soon as they have any satellites up there that are capable, they will allow emergency services to communicate via those satellites. So that's amazing. Uh, technically, it will work with only a handful of satellites and pretty much as soon as it's up, it should be able to run. They will, of course, have to wait for regulatory approval to be allowed to do that, but technically it should be able to happen as soon as they can get the satellites up there. Uh, it will not eliminate international plans or replace speeds because, again, if you're in a, a dense area and you have ground-based cell phone coverage, that will be much better than this, right? You'll be able to get your 5G coverage and stream your Netflix while you're walking down the street or something. You're not going to be able to do that with this. This is more of a middle of nowhere. I'm out of touch of everything else and I need to send some basic text messages, not replacing my basic cell phone coverage. But again, with T-Mobile, it should be integrated so you just don't even know. Uh, you, you go out in the middle of Yellowstone and you don't notice the fact that you've driven further away from any uh, cell phone thing and you no longer have actual contact. It just makes contact with Starlink instead and off goes everything. So uh, anyway, so let's see. Uh, once By the time they release it commercially, so they have a large enough fleet uh, or st a constellation of satellites, then the service should be essentially real time. So you should be able to send text messages and within a couple of seconds it gets sent. You get the response. Within a couple of seconds, you get the response. So that's amazing. So again, they're re reducing it or restricting it to just text messages kinds of communication. Um, maybe something like WhatsApp or something, maybe some basic pictures, things like that in the near term in order to save bandwidth because they need to be able to serve very large areas with, you know, only two to four megabits worth of, of stuff. So Elon said one to 2000 voice calls, but hundreds of thousands of texts simultaneously. So you might think like one to 2000 voice calls is a ton, but if we're talking about a thousand square kilometers, there could be a lot of voice calls in that area. So, right, so it's much better to serve a couple of hundred thousand text messages in that area rather than just one or 2000 voice calls. So that's the reason why they're restricting it at the beginning. And again, it's just going to emulate it as far as the phone's concerned. It will just be another cell tower and that's the way it'll work. This is really amazing stuff. I, I, I know Elon kept saying, like, what did he say? I think I'm going to make this the title of the video. He said, will the public understand this? <laughs> he was like, I don't think people are going to understand the magnitude of this. This is something that's never happened before. It's never been possible. It's always been backwards. The, the satellite antenna has been small. The ground-based antenna has been big. We're, we're reversing the entire thing. So the whole world is being turned on its head. So I hope you appreciate this. Have a lovely, lovely night or a lovely morning if you watch this tomorrow morning. And let me know in the comments if you have any further questions. I can try to answer them. In the meantime, sleep well knowing that the future is going to be a better place. That's pretty cool. Alrighty. Bye-bye, everybody.